In many people's eyes, the rotary engine is a dying breed, but not here at SEMA 2017. They are plentiful, and a variety of them could be seen on the floor everywhere. So in this case, we've got one of the most infamous FCs ever made here at this booth. This is Hertz Twerk Stallion, but it used to be V8. He went back to rotary. rotaries here but one of the more infamous ones is Hertz FC. Now he went from V8 to rotary. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about Does that make me a complete stump bad? Makes you a V8 out oh, of makes, you, it makes you a hero. <laughs> what we got here is an old ass twerk stallion. AKA a 1990 or 1989 Mazda RX-7 Turbo 2. Yes, it's a real Turbo 2. I've got the 13 BREW John Vargas from Angel Motorsports half bridged it through goopy seals in it. Um, did all kinds of other science on top of a GTX 35R, made it to policeman, long runner, uh, manifold, Mishimoto coolers, vibrant piping on the cool and hot side, elite rotary shop intake manifold, uh, built to apex, oil pan, alternator bracket, tensioner, Haltech 1500. Yeah, it's done up real nice. Got the Haltech and everything. We just tuned it over at Animal Auto. It made 400 at 12 PSI with very conservative timing. So I think it's got a lot more in it, um, but I don't need that. 400 is plenty to go drifting. I just want to have fun, good power. The only thing stopping me now that we actually made power is my transmission because I still have the T56 attached to it. Um, I think Rob's doing the same thing. So you guys might see a little bit of that, but basically I got the trans on and it, it moves and everything, but I think the throw out spacing is off because the clutch isn't fully disengaging. So. I gotta pull that out, fix that, put it back in, and then all this nice stuff is gonna get fucked up, so. I had this car for about six years now. It was in a V8, then it was turbo V8, and after like, driving the same setup for so long, it just gets bored. Yeah. So when I actually, my first car, my first drift car, was a Mazda RX-7. Um, it was a GTU NA, uh, bone stock rotary, and I loved it. One of my favorite cars. I blew that motor, put a turbo, two motor in it, three ported, in, um, stock turbo and everything else. I fucking loved that setup. Sounded good, wrapped good, it was amazing. And then I got out of that car for a while, got into some other cars, got back into this RX-7, and it already had a V8 in it. It was a crazy good deal for me. So I just rode that wave, but now that I've uh, saved a little bit of money, because these things are fucking expensive. Uh, I, I've gone ahead, got with John Vargas from Major Motorsports and, and did all the bells and whistles that I wanted to do seven or eight years ago, but I couldn't afford it. So it's not like I'm riding a wave or anything like that. This is something I've always wanted. And now that I've done it, I'm never going to come back because it sounds good. It, I mean, if your car shoots fire, how can you hate it? It's, it's as simple as that, you know? And like, from what I've seen, as long as it's built properly and taken care of properly, it's gonna run good. I know guys, Ilya from uh, Chicago, his FD runs great. Uh, John Vargas's customer's cars run great. I, I am excited to beat the crap out of this and hopefully prove that these motors are more than what the world thinks they are. So. Block out the haters, you know? Piece of shit. This, LS this, this while we're doing a video all about every car that's rotary, that should be rotary, this guy has an FC with a V8 in it. A turbo. A turbo V8. V8. Hatred, Yeah. right here. Where, how's the four rotor coming? Cut the video, cut the video, we're done. I'm here with one of my good friends, Aaron Parker, and he's here representing rotary in the Borg Warner booth. So I wanted him to tell you a little bit about his car and some of the relationship we have, particularly with who helped you assemble the engine. My engine builder, tuner, and life mentor has been Abe Labara. I've been with him for about six years now and pretty much just He's taught me everything he knows. The only reason that this car is working is because of Abel. Um, I've gone through three motors before I met Abel. You know, it kind of just worked out to where one day me and him crossed paths. He was like, well, you know, let me come check it out. He came check the car out. And from then on, he was like, dude, let's just bring your motor down. We'll tear it apart and we'll put together something that's gonna work for you. This is the Wolf. This is it? Yeah, so yeah. what I want to do is maybe have you break down a little bit about uh, 
what this car is, what yeah. it's got, and uh, how it's treated you. All right, so the motor features a uh, FR Performance semi-peripheral street ported motor. Uh, semi-peripheral meaning there's two small ports on the rotor housing themselves, and the uh, primaries have actually been opened up to street port. So uh, a lot of air goes in. It's um, got a four border. Uh, 8374D, twin scroll turbo on it with a Gleesman manu manufacturing motor, and it's got billet collectors with 321 stainless runners, and it's a long two manifold. A lot of people believe in short, I believe in long. Uh, why? Because I believe in torque, and I feel like the transient response is going to benefit you in the long run when you're on the course. Uh, I actually ordered a five speed sequential. So, Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen this car from long before it looked like this, long before it yeah. performed like this, and he, just like me, he's come from come from really, I mean, frankly, nothing. Right, you, right. you built it yourself Absolutely. all the way up. So it's, it's really neat to see friends improve and grow over time. So it's got to show the love. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if we met because of anything other than this car. Yeah. Like, no, what it was is your rotor video. Yeah. When you're out in the field, you're walking. Oh yeah, my rotor engine. I thought love. it was the funniest thing that I'd ever seen. I was like, dude, this guy has got it going on for sure. Yeah. Come to find out, you know, all the other cool stuff. So it's, it's neat to see his car in a booth representing. So it's, 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 I don't know. It's just neat when you see good people succeed, and here we are. What's up, man? It's nice to meet Finally, you. Yeah. yeah, internet, you know. Yeah, it's like I recognize so, you without ever. Yeah, I walked by and I was like, I know that guy. Yeah. So rotary yeah. people, this is how it happens. That's we right. love the Doritos. It's your year. You've got a new beast unveiled. Yeah, this is a project we've been working on, and it really all came together for SEMA in the past like three weeks. Uh, we imported the BN Sports kit from Japan, and it's the first kit that BN Sports has done other than the kit they released at the Tokyo Auto Salon. So oh. it's a first in the oh. U.S. thing. And there was like five to ten of us working on this car and you know this like you're getting ready for an event <laughs> labor of love now is, is this one yeah. going to be uh, seen on the formula drift circuit or is, does this have a different purpose that's we're all gonna have to wait and see <laughs> um, I don't build cars that are just show cars yeah no you don't no no definitely not and then this bad boy. This is nuts. What all am I looking at here? This is a billet ink motor. So it's a modular aluminum uh, side housing design, still utilizing factory eccentric shaft, factory rotors. When you're stressing a rotary motor, your cast iron components don't like to stress at the same rate as your aluminum components, whether it's heat or boost expansion. By creating aluminum components, we're expanding, contracting, creating a more ri rigid block that allows a lot more boost pressure. My three rotor looks nothing like this. <laughs> it, it, it might run solid, but not nearly like this. Now, one of the things you'll notice is this is uh, studded yep. and um, it's doweled and all that craziness. Yeah, yeah so this, this looks nothing like mine. And this is a big trick to how you create, you know, reliable rotary motors, whether you're using cast iron sides or you're using aluminum sides, running oversized studs through the length of the block. And that's got to be done, you know, precision. You can do it on a, a CNC, you can do it on just an upright mill, yeah. but it should be done by a professional. But that's limiting the boost expansion. And usually it's boost expansion or flexing of the block that leads to those irons cracking. Is this a kit? This is the BN kit? Yeah, yeah. So this is actually a available kit. Um, it's from BN Sports Japan. It's authentic JDM stuff. Um, it's amazing. It bolts right up. So I didn't want to take and hack up a third gen. They're classics. Um, I build super wild cars and I wanted to build a wild car that I could show other people what parts to use. I'm kind of a car dork, so you know, when the body kit came in, it had an authenticity stickers and a couple of the pieces had to get painted. You know, we flocked the whole dash and that was a, a project. I'd never done flocking before and uh, you know, FD dashes crack up a lot. Uh, first thing I noticed is the two rotor. Um, massive throttle body but I see the twin turbo now that's that's something different to me because I've always been a single turbo guy so what's what's the story on that the FD motor just a half bridge and OEM style intake with that larger throttle body and so hopefully with this half bridge at about 22 pounds of boost on ethanol we'll be putting down about 720 horsepower and if that all works out then we know that our math is right on our tuning and our injection and our turbos um, you know it's so clean looking because we just tried to eliminate anything that wasn't necessary yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and uh, 
pleasure to finally meet you in yeah. person. Dude, let's uh, let's get together and we'll we'll play yeah. Rotary someday. Or if you've ever got a project I can help you with, let me know. And if you want to come down to a Formula D event, yeah. let me know. I'll get you in. So that's the end of day three at SEMA. And as you can see, there are quite a few rotary engine powered rotary engine vehicles. So it's neat to see kind of a resurgence of the correct engine inside of the car. We didn't catch them all, but there's still one more day.